Hello, everyone. My name is Ethan. I'm 25, and yeah, I've got some special needs, but trust me, that doesn't stop me from giving it my all every day at the recycling plant where I work. Those conveyor belts. They're my turf. Yo, Ethan. Can you speed up belt 3? We've got a backlog coming in. That's Kyle, my best buddy at work. He's always got my back. On it, K. Watch me work my magic, I shout back. I love when the belts are running just right. It's like a symphony of cycling, and I'm the conductor. Speaking of bosses, my supervisor Heather is pretty cool. Great job organizing that pile of cardboard, Ethan. You've really got an eye for this, she says. Thanks, Heather. I aim to please, I reply. After a long day saving the planet one recycled item at a time, I head home to my folks. Mom is usually there with a big smile and an even bigger hug. How was work today, sweetie? She asks, ruffling my hair like I'm still a kid. It was awesome, Mom. We processed a ton of plastic today. Literally. Dad's a different story. He's always got his nose buried in paperwork, muttering about numbers. Robert, put those papers down and say hello to your son, Mom scolds, giving him the look. Oh, hey, Ethan, Dad says, barely glancing up. Good day at work. Yeah, Dad. It was great. I try not to let it get to me, but sometimes I wonder if he really sees me. At least I have my little sister. Chloe. She's off at college, living her best life, but she never forgets to check in. My phone rings. Hey, big bro. How's it hanging? Chloe's voice brings a smile to my face. Just finished work. How's college treating you? I ask. Oh, you know, living off ramen and coffee, the usual. You better be keeping mom and dad in line. We chat for a while, and it feels like she's right here. I miss her, but I'm so proud of her. Later that night, I'm chilling in my room when I overhear mom and dad talking in hushed tones. Robert, we need to talk about the business. Things aren't looking good, mom says. I know, Laura. I'm working on it. Just need a little more time. Dad replies. And what about Ethan? He needs. Not now, Laura. I can't deal with everything at once. I pretend I didn't hear anything, but it sticks with me. There's this tension in the air, like a storm brewing. But hey, that's life. You take the good with the bad. As I get ready for bed, I can't shake the feeling that something big is coming. Maybe it's just my imagination. Or maybe, well, who knows. All I know is, tomorrow's another day at the belts, and I'm going to crush it. That's how I roll. Fast forward to our road trip to see Chloe. I'm bouncing in my seat like a kid on Christmas morning. It's been forever since we've all been together, and I can't wait to see my little sis. Dad's at the wheel, Mom's riding shotgun and I've got the whole back seat to myself. Living the dream, right? But something feels off. Mom and Dad are whispering up front, and it doesn't sound like they're planning a surprise party. Robert, we can't keep ignoring this. The bills are piling up, Mom says. I told you, Laura. I've got it under control. I just need to make a few more calls. But what about? Not now. Ethan might hear. Too late, Dad. I heard every word. I pretend to be fascinated by the passing scenery. Trees are so interesting, you know. The tension in the car is thicker than peanut butter. I try to lighten the mood. Hey, remember when Chloe got car sick and puked all over Dad's new shoes? I say, forcing a laugh. Mom chuckles. Oh, sweetie, don't remind me. 
Your father was furious. Yeah, well, maybe if she hadn't insisted on reading in the car, dad grumbles. So much for breaking the tension. I sink back into my seat, wishing I had Chloe's talent for witty comebacks. Suddenly, everything goes sideways, literally. Robert, watch out. Mom screams. A massive truck swerves into our lane, horn blaring. Dad yanks the wheel, and the world turns into a blur of screeching tires and chaos. We smash through a barrier and suddenly, we're airborne. For a split second, I see my workplace below. Of all the places to fly over. The car lands with a bone-jarring thud, teetering on the edge of a cliff, or something equally terrifying. My heart races. This is really bad. The car door flies open, and suddenly I'm falling. The last thing I see is Dad holding Mom tight, not even sparing me a glance. Then pain. So much pain. I crash onto something hard and moving, a conveyor belt. The irony would be funny if it didn't hurt so damn much. Everything blurs into motion and agony. I hear shouting, familiar voices. Oh my god, Ethan. Someone call an ambulance. Hang on, buddy, we got you. Kyle. Heather. What are they doing here? Asterisk O, oh, right. Work, asterisk I landed at work. How's that for employee dedication? Everything fades as the pain overwhelms me, dragging me into darkness. The last thing I hear before slipping away is Dad's voice. Laura, are you okay? Thank God I got you out in time. What about me, Dad? What about me? He says, lawsuit. What's he talking about? Mom notices my confusion and tries to comfort me. Don't worry about that now, sweetie. How are you feeling? Like I fell off a cliff, I mumble. Dad snaps his phone shut. That's because you did, son. Do you have any idea how much trouble this could cause? The medical bills alone. Robert. Mom cuts him off. That's enough. The days blur together, doctors, nurses, endless tests. Through it all, one thing becomes clear, Dad is more worried about money than about me. One night, I pretend to be asleep and overhear my parents talking outside my room. We can't keep this up, Robert. The embezzlement, the gambling, it's destroying our family, Mom says. My heart pounds. Asterisk embezzlement. Gambling, asterisk what the hell. I told you I'll fix it, Dad insists. We just need to cut some expenses. That care facility I mentioned. No. I won't send Ethan away. He's our son. He's a financial burden, Laura. We can't afford. I feel like I've been punched in the gut. Asterisk a burden. Is that all I am to him? Asterisk. The next day, Chloe shows up. Man, it's good to see her. Hey, big bro. You look like crap, she jokes. Thanks, sis. Love you too, I reply. We chat for a bit, but I can tell something's eating at her. Finally, she snaps. I know everything, Ethan. Dad's crimes, his plan to send you away. I confronted them last night. My heart sinks. And? Dad tried to justify it. Mom just stood there, silent. Betrayal. That's the only word for what I feel. What are we going to do, Em? I ask, desperate. She grabs my hand. We're going to fight. You and me against the world, just like when we were kids. For the first time since the accident, I feel a spark of hope. As the weeks pass and I push myself in physical therapy, that spark grows. I work harder than ever, teeth gritted against the pain. The nurses and therapists are impressed, but I'm not doing this for them, I'm doing it for me. 
One day, as I'm struggling through exercises, I hear dad talking to my doctor. So, about that care facility. That's it. I've had enough. No. I say, loud enough for them to hear. Dad turns, startled. Ethan, you don't understand. I understand plenty, I cut him off. I'm not going anywhere. This is my life, and I'm taking control of it, starting now. The look on his face. Priceless. But this is just the beginning. I've got plans, big plans, and I'm not letting anyone stand in my way. Watch out, world, Ethan is coming back stronger than ever. Physical therapy is brutal, but I'm relentless. Every day, I push harder, fight through the pain, and prove everyone wrong. Finally, the day comes when I'm cleared to return to work. Ethan. Man, it's good to have you back. Kyle grins, giving me a hearty slap on the back. Heather's there too, beaming. We've missed you around here, she says. How are you feeling? Ready to kick some recycling butt, I reply. And I mean it. They ease me back into things, but I'm not holding back. I throw myself into every task, learn new skills, even take on extra shifts. I'm determined to make a mark. One day, Heather pulls me aside. Ethan, can we talk? I've been watching your progress and, well, how would you feel about a promotion? A supervisory role. My jaw drops. Are you serious? Dead serious, she says, smiling. You've earned it. Meanwhile, at home, everything is imploding. Dad's business partner has discovered the embezzlement, and the whole scheme is collapsing like a house of cards. How could you do this, Robert? Mom cries, but there's anger in her voice too. To our family. To Ethan. I was trying to provide for us. Dad shouts back. By stealing. By trying to send our son away. I try to stay out of it, but Chloe is on the warpath. She's hired me a lawyer, a real shark. We're going after him for everything, Ethan. The accident, the attempted abandonment, all of it. Part of me wants to say no, to be the bigger person. But then I remember that day at the cliff, Dad reaching for Mom and not me. I remember, financial burden. Do it, I tell her. The case doesn't even make it to court. Dad goes down for embezzlement, and his lawyer advises him to settle everything else. It's enough for me to get my own place and start fresh. Moving day arrives, and Mom is there helping me pack. There are tears in her eyes. I'm so proud of you, sweetie. And I'm so, so sorry. I hug her tight. It's okay, Mom. We're going to be okay. My new apartment isn't much, but it's mine. All mine. That night, after everyone has left, I stand on my small balcony, looking out at the city. Asterisk my city. My life, asterisk. My phone buzzes. It's Chloe. How's the new place, big bro? It's perfect, M. Everything's perfect. And for the first time in my life, I really mean it. I'm not just the guy with special needs anymore. I'm Ethan, supervisor, apartment dweller, survivor. I'm free. The story has ended, but now I have a question for you. If you were in my shoes, could you ever forgive a parent who saw you as a burden and chose to save someone else in a life-or-death situation? What would it take for you to consider reconciliation?